Hi guys, it's Nancy and I am back with the rooster. So this is the Good Morning Rooster from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. I already made a panel with this guy. I will link that at the end if you missed him. But I wanted to use the little one in conjunction with the barn and the silo. And I wasn't going to make a video, but I'm going to stick with the pan pastels because they have been fast and easy. And we're going to make this card. So what I've already done is use that same pastel pastel. I keep saying pastel because that's how everybody else says it. Strathmore pastel paper. This is the light blue. I've cut it down to five and a quarter by four. Put that on my Misty. It's stuck back there in the corner with some um, sticky grip. And I've already placed and stamped my rooster. Okay. But I want to mask that because before I can put the barn on there, I don't want um, the barn on top of my rooster. I want it to look like the rooster is in front of the barn. Right. So I've stamped him onto a little bit of masking paper here and it doesn't need to be precise this is inka dinka do masking paper by the way um, i really just want to make sure that the top of him is fully protected so pretty easy to cut out and for those of you that have seen this before um you know, I think a lot of times we forget about masking, but when you're doing scenes, it's really um, easy to do masking. And for those of you that are new, welcome to my channel. Welcome to paper crafting. Anything that I can help you out with, you can comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to get notifications whenever I post new videos. All right, so see, that took like no time at all to cut him out. Let me just get the bottom of his feet here. Like I said, not a big deal. All right, so I've stamped him out with archival ink, and that's because it dries pretty quickly, so he should be ready to go. We're going to pull off the blue part, which is the, um, the backer. And basically, um, masking paper is a really thin adhesive that we can stamp on and it's easy to remove and the reason they make it thin is so that when you stamp on it you don't have any kind of lines just you know separating one stamp to the other when you're stamping on top of it so that's why it's really important for this to be thin if you don't have masking paper you can also use uh, post-it tape I've used that a few times so we're going to mask that off. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to stamp our barn. Now this barn image is a pretty nice image, but it look, you know, we want it to look like the barn is kind of out further and that our rooster is kind of in front. So I want to make sure that when I line this up that I raise it up a little bit. So basically, you know, like I said, I'm just kind of protecting his head. So we're going to... I'm going to have to raise it up a little higher than that. So I didn't really need to mask him. Only because I want to keep both stamps intact here. Okay. So now I'm going to use the archival ink because it dries quickly. And I'm using my Blue Night Rubber Stamps handle. This is a strong magnetic handle. You buy the handle. It comes with one of these magnetic plates. You can buy another one. And there's two very strong magnets built inside that handle. And it makes it very easy to hold on to that ink pad. This particular ink pad has a very thin surface area. So if you are somebody who struggles with uh, dexterity, with arthritis, it's a little harder for you to hold on to these ink pads. Um... It makes it a lot easier, but just for the sheer purpose of not dropping your ink pad, these handles are nice to be able to grip, and they give you nice full coverage when inking up the stamp. Okay, I'm going to ink it up again. Now I'm going to color this in and re-stamp it again. But um, I'll show you that trick when we're at the end here. All right, so I didn't even need to mask. I did all that for nothing. But you can see, because he's closer to us, it, you know, it makes a perspective. If we put him over there, it would look like we had like this 10-foot 
rooster. So because he's in the yard, he looks fine. Let me pull this piece out. And I have, again, laminated this and it's stuck on there with a piece of sticky grid. We're gonna move this to the side. And we're gonna very quickly color this in with pan pastels. I just took a rag and cleaned off that extra ink. And we can lift our masking paper off of there. Actually, I'm gonna leave the masking paper on there for a second because I wanna color, I wanna color the ground green, right? We want grass to be green. So I'm gonna use a couple different palettes, couple different colors here. Blue Night Rubber Stamp sells a Sunrise Sunset palette, which is going to be your warmer tones, your reds, your oranges, and so on. And they also sell a um, Day and Night palette, which is going to be um, these seven colors here. So when you have the palette, it comes with seven colors. There's also a white that's included. You can purchase additional colors like this green. Some of these others I've picked up in various places. You always want to get colorless blender. What's nice is the value you get for these pan pastels. So normally if you purchase one of these pastels colors, and these are highly pigmented, basically chalks. They're finely milled pastel chalks. They are put into a pan instead of put into a stick and they make it very easy to store to mix to blend um very super super easy cleanup so when you get the palette it's going to have like i said these colors and then a white it's going to come with the palette itself which is very easy storage they come with individual lids i'll be honest with you i threw my lids out i don't need them for anything you also get a variety of um, different sizes of sponges and blending tools. So you get a handful of those. Um, but normally, if you buy these retail, and I normally get them from Blick, and I'll link, I'll link them down below if there's some extra colors you want that Blue Knight doesn't carry, they're about $7 each. So if you take those seven colors, you're spending $49, plus the palette, which is around $10 to $15, and then the sponges, which are normally around another, I would say, 6 to $7 for that. So Blue Knight Rubber Stamps is selling you the whole thing, the palette, the colors, and the sponges, and it's a phenomenal value. I think it's $49. $49.99. So definitely worth it. If you can pick up both palettes, you're going to, you're going to be fully covered. And I just had these two palettes for the longest time. And I only just now started to venture out. Same thing with this palette. You're going to get these seven colors on, on this palette. And then you have room on your palette to add extra colors. So some of the extra colors that Blue Knight Rubber Stamps carries is this green, which is bright yellow green. You definitely want a colorless blender. Do not leave that out of your basket. I keep my lid on mine because it says colorless blender. Um, and, you know, there's some pearl colors in there, some metallic colors, which are nice for the holidays. There's gold, um, things like that. So... Go check that out in the meantime. And you want to get yourself a nice um, eraser. And we're going to open this one up. And we're going to get right into it. Like I said, you get a variety of different um, sponges as well. They're called soft tools. They were specifically engineered to be used with the pan pastels so that they hold the colors. You don't need to do anything special to clean them. You can see that mine are highly stained. Um, you just use a paper towel. It doesn't affect anything. And at the end of the day, if you end up with a little bit of pigment on your fingers, it's super easy to clean up. Now I was using the reverse cloud stencil, which I have now put down and cannot locate. If I find it, I'll find it. All right, so I'm just gonna go into a variety of my different um, greens here, and you know, it's so easy. You color it in. And so now I am glad that I, I, mas I masked the little rooster because now I don't have to worry about him getting turning green. Gonna dip in a couple different colors here, mix them up, make it a little different. Okay, I'm gonna go and 
into a little corner here and do my tree. And again, one of the benefits to using this is if you make a mistake, it's really easy. This is an electric eraser. I will link this down. It's in my Amazon store under the pan pastel bucket. And you can erase any place you went out of the lines where you don't want color. Just an eraser. That's it. See, nobody's ever going to know. Super easy. Okay, let's do our barn. Um, actually, I found my stencil. <laughs> um, let me go in and add. Yeah, we can go in. We'll add some light blue to this one. The last one I did actually, I did white. Let's just do up here. very easy to add some sky there and then I just have a paper towel and all you do is you take your sponge and you just rub it along the paper towel it's that easy I'm gonna grab the sunrise sunset palette which has more of our warm colors let's see do I have I want my barn to be a dark red let me see what I have here All right, this color is called Permanent Red Shade. And all you do if you don't have this one is you take your permanent red and you mix it with black to make permanent red shade. But since I have already purchased it, I'm just going to go right out of the pan here. And I'm going to grab one of my little soft tools here. And again, just going to dip into that and fill all this in. Now, if you feel like, hey, that is way too dark, I don't like how bright that is, you can keep moving that color until it's where you want it. And if it's too light, you just layer some more on top of it. So I'll start where it's darker and then I'll pull that color into the lighter areas. Same rules apply to, you know, regular coloring. You want to add a little shadow, pull some of that down. But again, the artists that design these stamps for blue night rubber stamps do a very good job at already putting that in so you don't have to do very much here okay the silo i think i'm gonna do um some gray on the roof and the silo so that's really easy just gonna turn my palette around i'm going to do the roof in panes gray Grab a little smaller tool here. And they sell extra soft tools on the Blue Night Rubber Stamps webpage as well. They sell these when they look like little eyeshadow applicators, but they hold up a lot better <laughs> for sure. Okay, so I'm going to go into Payne's Gray, which is like a bluish gray. And you can see how easily this is coming together. Okay, and then for the other 
part of the silo. I'm going to make that a lighter gray. So we have Payne's gray tint, which is just adding that Payne's gray with white. So tint means they added white. Shade means they added black. So if you already have the colors, you can just take them off to the side and mix, mix the other black or white in there to make it a shade or a tint. back here I missed with a little green on that guy now there's a tiny little fence and some flowers there so I'm not going to try to fill those in with pan pastels I'm actually going to grab some color pencils I have used regular color pencils I have used chalk color pencils I just purchased a new set these are the Stabilo Carbothello pencils. There's 24 in here. I'll link those for you as well in my Amazon shop for you guys. And all we're going to do here is, so we have a little bit of fence over here, and we also need to now color in our rooster. So I'm going to peel that back. So And then I keep the masks. I keep them with the stamp set so that way when I want to use them again I already have the mask made up until they get kind of torn up but he's really little so we need to help him out so first thing I'm going to work on is my little my little fence back here and one of the reasons why I like having this on this little laminated piece is I don't have to touch it or get my fingers in it anywhere. I know he's kind of a little guy, so. I'm gonna be really quick with coloring him. You can add as much or as little detail as you want. Over here, I'm imagining that this is some, maybe some dried corn or something, you know. All right, I think we're good to go. So two last things we like to do. Okay, if you want to add a sentiment, this is the part where you're going to add the sentiment. I added the sentiment on the last one, so I'm going to leave this one without a sentiment. Okay. I like to re-stamp my images. That's why I left my stamps in my Misty. Another reason why I like having it on this laminated sheet is because I know once I put this back in here, it's going to go in that bottom left corner and it's going to stamp perfectly. So we're going to re-ink since I didn't move anything. We're going to re-ink our stamp. Stamps uh, more than one should be able to do both of them at the same time here since I did not move them and now this is just going to bring our detail back to the front of the card because some of that may have gotten colored in I really don't see anywhere where I need to go in with the eraser I did a pretty good job at staying in the lines my kids would be proud of me and because these are the same stamp manufacturer they should be the same thickness if it's if that's not the case I can um, maybe do the rooster 
and then mask him. That looks pretty good. I might be off a little bit actually, but actually it's not too bad. Right, so now we have our detail back. I'm going to very carefully remove this. There you can see the sticky grid. And I'm going to bring in my spray box. And then I spray with matte uh, on these. You want to do this in a well-ventilated area. I know some people like to... Spray hairspray. Hairspray is not recommended by Pam Pastels. Whoops, if you want your image to stay archival, you could use it. Um, but I found some matte spray, there's fixative spray, there's glossy spray, there's all kinds that you can um, purchase. That's it. A quick spritz. And it will dry very quickly, and everything will be in place, and it will not smudge when you mail it or attach it to your card base. So again, let me show you both cards. This is the one I did earlier using the full size rooster. And here is the one combining it with the barn. Let me know which one you like better down in the comments. Do you like the rooster all by himself or do you like the rooster with the barn? And it will lighten back to its original color once the fixative has um, dried. But again, everything is purchased um, from Blue Knight Rubber Stamps. This is the Good Morning Rooster set. We have the large rooster, the small rooster, and the sentiment. So here I use the large rooster and the sentiment. Here I use the smaller rooster. In this one, I also use the barn called the barn and silo don't forget about the reverse cloud stencil so i use the reverse cloud stencil on both of these cards to make the clouds and then i use the top of the stencil to make this kind of grassy area in fact i really want that to look like grass and even though i've sprayed this i think we can we can add some dry grass to that let me slide this one out of the way There we go. Maybe we maybe the farmer didn't get around to this particular post, okay? Now on a smooth paper, this would be a little difficult to do because um, the fixative would actually prevent you from doing that. But because this is pastel paper, we are able to kind of add some of that back in. I'm just going to layer a couple colors and then what I'll do is I will spray more fixative over top of it. There we go. I think that looks a little better than just kind of having this floating. <laughs> there we go. There we go. And then we can go back in with some of that green. That green goes right on top of that dark color. No problem. That is cool. Layers right on top. No one's ever going to know, except for you guys, that that wasn't there. So now, like I said, all I have to do is re-spray that with the fixative. So there we go. Two rooster cards. Let me know in the comments below which one you like 
the rooster by himself or the rooster with the barn. Check out everything from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. You can check out their stamps, their pan pastels, their stencils. Um, also, we have a Facebook page. It's Fans of Blue Night Rubber Stamps. There is a Blue Night Rubber Stamps YouTube channel. And, of course, you want to check out the blog so that you can get some inspiration from the rest of the design team members. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, click that subscribe button and the bell, and you will get notifications whenever I post a new video. There is a huge playlist on Blue Night Rubber Stamps and also on using pan pastels if that's a new medium for you. Go check it out. Thanks for watching and keep on stamping. Bye-bye.